So Mr. Burley at the Orc Catholic District School Board. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a circle in Bex VR to have the robot move in a circle um, through movements, through angle and distance. And basically what it's going to look like is something along the lines like this. Now, this one's using variables, but right now it's moving to the top of the circle, wherever that its circle happens to be, and it moves from that circle. So that's what's going to happen right there. The very first thing I have to do is I have to establish where this is, and I have to also draw this. This size right here, the, the, what you're looking at, I've drawn, first of all, in AutoCAD. So in AutoCAD, this is your zero, zero point in the center. Then what I have to do is draw a line going this way, 875, a line going this way, 875, 875, and 875. And then I draw lines all the way around and create the box. So essentially, this box now is from that point there to this point here, which you can see is 1750. So the robot starts off negative 900, negative 900 down here in, in quadrant number three, right? We got one, two, and three, and four. So this is negative X and negative Y down here. The robot's then going to move forward to this position, and then it's going to move over to here. It's going to go to the top of the circle. If I was drawing this circle, I'd have the robot move up to here and over to here, whatever circle it happens to be. So the first thing I have to do is I have to establish the distance from the bottom here to the very top of this. And you can see it's 1625. So if I go to my code now and close that, forget the gray. The gray is only comments. I'm looking right now at the blues, these ones here. You can see this is the very first one. This is where I take my robot to the top of the circle. So first I do is, you don't really need it here, but I put in set velocity to 100%. Drive forward 1625. So it's going to then go up. 1625. It's going to start here. It's going to move up 1625. Then it's going to stop. Then I have to tell it to turn right and come off, come across whatever distance that happens to be. And that distance we know is 875. So this is where I come up with these numbers. So now I got eight, not turned 90 degrees, went 875 over. Once I got there, I set my plan color to blue. Then I put the pen down. And then down here, this just explains how I came up with the calculation. But to get it to do a circle, the these are the this is the repeat sequence we need to do and what this is doing is it's driving forward for a certain number then turning 10 degrees then driving forward a certain number and turning 10 degrees well if it's turning 10 degrees each time you know it's going 360 degrees total so that means it has to repeat 36 times so this number right here is the number we have to come up with these two numbers right here you come up with ahead of time. So I know that 10 degrees and 36 repeats creates a half decently smooth circle. If I wanted a very, very, very smooth circle, I of course could put this to one degree and have it 360 times or even five degrees and 72 times. But I find that 10 degrees and 36 repeats of that sequence. So it's just going to do this 36 times is what that, what's what that means. Now, this number, to come up with that number, here's what I do. I come back, first of all, I have to know the diameter and ultimately the radius. And I'm going to do it on Google Sheets. If you come into Google Sheets, you can see the numbers I need. The first number I'm going to need is this number right here, this guy. And to find him out, I need to find the circumference. Well, I know the radius of that particular circle is 750 because this is the circle I'm drawing. So if I come in here and I click the radius, I know that that radius is 750. So using the radius 2 pi r, I can then figure out the circumference. So 2 pi r, which is the radius is 750, so 2 times pi times 750 gives me 4,710 millimeters. Now that number there, 4,710, has to be divided by the number of repeats. So in this case, we're using 36. We're moving 10 degrees and we're moving 36. Whatever the repeat happens to be, if I was doing one degree, then of course it'd be 360, and I divide it by that number. You take this number here, 4,710, and you divide it by the number of repeats to give you the numbers, this number right here and what to move forward. So if you look right here, you can see if I click on that, you can see it's D9 divided by B6. I'm dividing this number here by this number right here on Google Sheets, okay? Which is 130.83333 repeated. So then I come in here, 130.8. I don't know where I come up with that number. So 0.8. And so on. Now I, met, I kept this simple. I could change a few things. I could add some variables in here. I could come up here, make my own variable, and set it up top, and put the radius as a variable, and then put the, re the repeats as a variable. 
it's not really good practice to have these numbers down in here, but it shows you what I'm doing. So it makes it simpler for right now. So now if I go and test it and look at the code, it comes up to the top of the circle. It stops. It's going to turn now. It's running the first top of the block. You can see where it's running. And now it starts to make that circle. So it's going forward this distance, turning 10 degrees, going forward this distance, turning 10 degrees. And you end it. I mean, if I if I didn't want it to go the whole direction, of course, this is going 36 times. Of course, divide it by 2 or divide it by 4, it would be where that ends up. So it does a full circle. Okay, so that is the simple way to do it with blocks. And if you click here, you can see you can't edit this Python, but you can see how the Python is working. You see what we're doing, setting up some, this is a bad example. I'm not actually using variables, so you can ignore those. But what's happening here is it sets percentage, moving forward 16, 25, turning right 90 degrees, moving across, setting the pen color here and here. And then down here, it's doing the calculation. It's going repeat for 36 times do this 36 times. So every time it does it 36, 35, 34, 33, and it counts that timer down. So drive train, drive forward, 130.833 millimeters, right? And so start off with this, and then we'll do the coding afterwards. I'll show you now, um, exit out of that for a second. I'm going to show you this is the VEX code. This is, I got a little bit more complicated here. And this one here, I did set myself a variable up top, right here. And you can see this sets the velocity, moves the robot to the spot. This is repeating 72 times. With this one, I'm going five degrees. So a little smoother circle. And down here, what I've done is I came in and used an operator. I got two times pi, I typed pi in there, times the radius. Radius is up here. This is your radius. So this is a variable, grabbing it from there. So whatever that is, it's putting it down in here, right? And then it's dividing by 36. This is actually wrong. This should not be 36. This should be 72 because this number here should match this number here, right? Now, watch it. Come up. Just a simpler way to do it. I can make it even simpler. I could put another function over here. A little smoother circle, right, than it was in the past. So it goes around that. And then I have one more. This one here is the Python one. And I'll show you this one. Works exactly the same way. It comes up. So right here, what we've got here is the same thing. It break, breaks it down. Percentage going forward. Pen's coming on. And I'll open up one more. I'm going to show you circle calculation Python variables for. This one here, I've used variables. These ones are, so I've got my global variables variables right here. You can see I've set my global variables, variables radius, got my repeat count and pi. Where I'm using them is down here. You can see I've got my pi right there. So it's going up here and it's using that number. Multiplied times the radius. It says, what's the radius? It's 300, great. What's the repeat count? Well, the repeat count is 36, and then you've got millimeters. So it just simplifies your project program by not having numbers all over it. And plus, it makes it much easier to come up here and change something. If I wanted to make change the radius, I'd come up here and switch it out to 400, 500, or whatever the case may be. Okay. So these ones here, you see I've got them rammed out or, or uh, commented out because they're not actually being used. You do have to set my variable equals zero up top here, and then down here you put your global variables in the bottom. Okay. Okay. Thanks for watching. Hopefully that makes sense.